Forget Bernardo Silva. Who cares about Alvaro Morata? Alexander Laka who? There's a far more important addition coming to this year's Premier League that will have a far bigger impact on the game in the long term than any continental import. It will make more appearances this year than those players put together, but unlike them, it hasn't arrived from mainland Europe, but from a new ruling found on page 224 of the FA's Rules and Regulations Guidebook for 2017-2018. We're talking about shirt sleeve sponsorship, and we're not the only ones. Allowed only on the left sleeve of the kit, the sponsor logo cannot exceed a maximum width space of 10 centimeters and must still pass approval from the governing body. This particular space has become available after the removal of one of the two Premier League logos which have adorned the sides of all kits in the top division for years. So far, over half the Premier League clubs have embraced the change, with some of the division's biggest and smallest teams looking to add more cash to their coffers. Estimates report that shirt sleeve sponsorship could be worth as much as 20% of what clubs receive from their main shirt sponsorships. Meaning, for a club like Manchester United who receive nearly £50 million a year from Chevrolet, slapping a badge on the arm has the potential to add another £10 million of revenue every year. That's a good chunk of Pogba's salary already paid for right there. As exciting as this is for Premier League accountants, the change has not been as warmly received by some fans. Many have asked what precedent has been set and if advertising is allowed on the sleeves today, where will it be seen tomorrow? Thankfully for those fans, not all clubs will be embracing the opportunity, as many have chosen to go into the new season without sleeve sponsorship. But sleeves aren't the only places where fans will notice changes on their beloved club's kits, as a host of changes to rulings regarding kit sponsorship come into play. On the front of each kit, the space allowed for front shirt sponsorship has been expanded from 250 square centimetres to 350 square centimetres. However, just like the sleeve sponsorship rule, not all clubs are embracing the rule change, most notably those playing in Europe. This is due to a UEFA advertising ruling allowing a maximum of 200 centimetres for front of shirt sponsorship, resulting in clubs like Arsenal turning down the opportunity to expand their Emirates sponsorships any bigger to ensure that their domestic and continental kits are not too different. Unlike in the Premier League, football league clubs have been allowed to wear additional sponsorships on the back of their kits and shorts since 2004. But it came with a catch. Any additional sponsorship meant that the maximum space allowed for front of shirt sponsorship had to be reduced. This led to an incident in last season's fixture between Brentford and Nottingham Forest. Despite sharing the exact same front shirt sponsorship, 888 Sport, the logo on Brentford's, who have a short sponsorship, was noticeably smaller than Forest's. Whilst the relaxing of advertising regulations are only a matter of inches and centimetres, a lot of people in the football community are concerned with where this could all lead. When they were first introduced to the British game in 1979, shirt sponsors had to be less than half the size they are now and kits worn during televised matches weren't allowed any advertising whatsoever. With the space allowed for advertising on kits now doubled in the Premier League and increased fourfold in the Football League, fans' concerns are understandable. But what are your thoughts on the rule change? Is this another sign that modern football is eroding the principles of our game? Or are you excited to see more South American style kits come in and give your club a financial boost? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Copper90.